you so much, etc. Before you get to the question, because it's gonna name off the question. So if you have a question, just write the question part. Just the question part. If you want to tell Wally D that you love her, say it in the chat. If Indeed. you have a question, just put mm -hmm. that alone in the question section. Okay, let me oh. officially let me officially introduce you. Fix up your face for your introduction. Give me an introduction face. Something with sauce. Ready. So this is Deandra Wallace, a.k.a. Wally D. Official. She right. is 19 years old. A social media blogging sensation. Well, that would be a vlogging sensation. A teenage mom who has turned her journey into a story of resilience and success. And of course, a proud representative of Team Sikiana. Right, true. <laughs> Lady, your woman's so nice. Really? You come out. Right out. Right oh, out. thank you so much for joining us to have this conversation. Um, and for just being willing to, in a public space, talk about something that carries so much stigma associated with it. I saw Especially somebody from our culture, Jamaicans. Exactly. I saw somebody in the chat and they were saying that when they were going to Women's Center and they were wearing the uniform, people used to follow them down the road, walk them down, shouting at them. All right. So when I attended the Women's Center in 2016, I was known as Fanny. Right. And when you say Fanny, you know, say she, <laughs> Fanny Mouse, <laughs> don't play Fanny. Because Fanny will answer you. Spicy. What Fanny used to do is just that's all you have in your earphone. At the time, earpods was not it. Right. So I used to have it in my earphone. Then I used to block them out because when they think that I cannot hear them, yeah. they're not going to get a response. So it didn't right. really, you know? Yeah. Not so every you, action got a reaction from me. So you also went through the Women's Center program. And I saw you in the chat. You were saying it's a home away from home. Yes, it is. It is. Can you tell us a little bit from your perspective what it was like, like going through that Women's Center program? Were you anxious when you did go in? Like, how you did feel? Okay, so when I went through Women's Center, really, I was nervous. Yeah. So I was nervous. I was nervous. I was anxious. I was doing all the emotions, feeling everything. Yeah. So when I put on the uniform officially now. That was it. That was where the problem started. That okay. was where everybody was like, wait. We knew that we heard that you were pregnant. Yeah. But they seal it out now. This is it now. It's really good. Yeah. It's not pregnant now. Goody are breed. Yeah. yeah. Goody is breeding. Yes. And you know, you have to walk with that thing. Walk with your head up because the day you go like this, you're going to you're going to drop your body. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to roll, rock at your butt and everything. You're going yeah. through a rough time now because they're going to feel as if they have me under power. Yeah. They can overpower me and anything they say can be used against me. Yeah. Yeah. You see that thing where we feel that we have the right to treat certain people certain ways and we don't even stop to think about what that implies we don't stop to think or actually we feel like we're doing a service you know we feel you see that young girl yeah she breed i'm gonna shame her so all of the other young girls i'm gonna know so them nothing do this because them see how me shame up that one year and we don't no, watch me yeah go on a lot of people cannot get pregnant and it's the sad truth yeah a lot of people cannot do it. Yeah. A lot of people spend a lot of money and do the whole system this or put the term into this and all of that. Yeah. Listen, it is a blessing. But it yeah. is also a lesson. Because me, I got pregnant. Yes, it was early. It was wrong. Yes, mm -hmm. but we do all the thing. Mm -hmm. And it got the wrong way. Mm -hmm. Everybody know that. Mm -hmm. But I was not financially. Yeah. I was not mentally. And I definitely was not physically ready. Yeah. Because yeah. up to now, I am still small. So people really want to know where I had been to in me. Right. Me. They don't know what happened. They think that I am a joke. Right. They thought that I was on YouTube saying it was a prank until they started part two with the evidence. Right. Right. Um, a whole child. Very, yes. A whole child that you had as a cool. whole nine pound baby boom. right right C section and all these things right the healing process alone was something that i was like listen girl 
you know, go back here, so until ring before baby. Right. I'm sorry. <laughs> ring before baby. So you no got more some clarity. Box. You got some clarity yes. after that pregnancy. Yes. Yes. Okay. And being at home and dealing with certain bullying, already the verbal abuse was it. Because yeah. daddy, now make it go to your guy your bed and you have to wake up early. You're still going to wash the plate. You're still going to do what you have to do. You have a chore the same way. I never tell you to do what you do. Say, so, you no, know, you have to multitask. You're a yeah. daughter. Yes, you're a mother. And you're are you going to manage? Mother. Yeah. You're going to have to manage Your all teams. of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All okay. Of that. okay. 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 So, Mawan, take your back now to before the pregnancy because because we want to want this we want the young people them who in you know, mind are try to think through them situation now to hear it from you what did you know or what had you heard about pregnancy before you got pregnant at 14 all right so when i was smaller i used to hear that just hugging a boy can get a pregnancy you know because you know Jamaican parents tell you the most and tell you that idiot a long time, they don't talk to anybody. When we used to have the cousin sleep over, I hear that if boy and girl sleep in the same bed, so a baby is going to fall from the sky and all these things. They tell me that idiot a long time. Right through. Don't laugh, don't laugh now. Don't yeah, that's your metro. I keep myself out and just because <laughs> the people that are laughing at the chat and it's not fear because me, I fear try to keep it together. Go on. So, so if you touch them, you're going to breed. And then something happened. You're pregnant. Something went to happen to you. Then the next thing was um, me really just wondering, what is this now? Going through closer. Right. Closer to this time when I'm getting pregnant. Right. And that was happening at home because I had a baby sister and she was going through a phase and she was sick and all of that. So I really think that the depression there and everybody being confused in the household, mm -hmm. I was really searching for love. Yeah. But me no, find papa, mm -hmm. love our papa more than cook food. Mm -hmm. Papa is no one for me. Yeah. Nobody can tell me anything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nobody can tell me that this boy don't love me. Yeah. Nobody can tell me that this boy have somebody else. Nobody can tell me nothing. Me, yeah. love papa, All right. papa is mine. Finally, I'm and papa, papa together. Yes, <laughs> and Papa can KFC one or two times. Me and Papa walk. Papa is it. Papa is mine. Papa yes. is who is nobody else but Papa. Papa nice. Right. <sighs> and then Papa start touches. Right. Oh. Right. Right. Papa start. Mama right. and Papa know. Not right. Papa. Yeah. And, yeah. But I didn't know because I was still seeing my. What should I say now? My my what should I what should I call it? What that period? It was the implant implantation bleeding. Oh yes, right, right. But you know what, Papa? Yeah. Yeah, you did have a plan. Okay, I'm it, so no, man, it was, glad. It was um to me it was the period. It wasn't any. You thought implant. that your, your period did come, so you did good. <laughs> right, right. But guess what happened now? The tickets start get thick. No, you're really and that will never happen. That will never happen. Me and wait is not it. And that was the giveaway. So at what point did you say something is different? All right. Wally is naturally craving. Right. Everybody can tell you that. Me craving bad. Right. Me love my KFC and me love my food. Take right. right through. Right. You're a cousin calling me take right through. But when they say me, you know, I'm energetic. I'm right. active at all of these things. I used to come home from school and I start sleeping a bit. So I'm like, um, girl, you're not that tired. What happened? Right? Yeah. Um, girl. Yeah. But I could eat. I could do all of that. I was good. Right. But don't wait, man. You just start gaining weight. My uniform couldn't close. I'm like, right. no. <laughs> Something Whoa. is wrong. Whoa. Okay. I mean, this? Yeah, spreadway. Check up all of the face. Nosiana. Nosiana. One time. Nosiana. Move from, from Tikiana to Nosiana Boo. Huh? Right. Like, mm, mm, mm. Okay. I did not come here to be a human vacuum and smell up the all of the face. Right. So, so at, the, at the time when you and Papa start get close and the little touchy start, 
the some them that your parents told you, say, if, if somebody touched you, you got pregnant, if you lie down in a bed with somebody, you got pregnant. Was there a point at which you believed any of those things? And at what point did you go, this is foolishness? <laughs> what really happened? Let me tell you. Come yeah. On. Let's talk. So we're talking. So, at that time, I was really like, they, they're tricking me. They ain't know nothing. They're tricking me. <laughs> it because it not happened to me. But when I realized that my, my clothes was not closing. Right. I was Ooh, ooh. Some happened to me. It's some happened. Okay, so I want us to get this clear for the people who are out there telling their children the foolishness. When you tell your child the foolishness that if somebody touch them, they are going to breed, and then somebody touch them and they don't breed, then the child will continue further and further and further and further on because as far as them concerned, but they beat the system. Next thing. The babies don't fall from the sky. They fall from your coochie. They really do come from your coochie. And yes. they, sometimes they have to open your belly and take them out. Yeah, they open my belly and tell mm. them my coochie. Yeah, because uh, when 90 pound of you, they don't go with 9 pound baby. Where was 90 mm -hmm. pound of you going with 9 pound baby? Like, oh, okay. My family members that were around me used to call him Zinger because KFC should be, I should be a KFC ambassador. <laughs> I used to eat KFC right through. Right through. So... Right true. You now are pregnant. The clothes are not fitting. Your nose has taken over your entire face. No, yes, my nose was doing the most. I couldn't do selfies, and at that mm -hmm. time it was it was this face. Side. <laughs> so my so, nose was really covering. So all right, walk us through now your experience preparing for motherhood. Your experience, like as a teen mom in the healthcare system. Team, your experience in terms of how the people in your community respond to you like walk us through all of them something there. okay so people in my community hardly yeah. saw me first because i disappeared but i went to a different community of course but the people still knew me because my family is known in that community right but so I, so I took myself away to avoid the backlash. Right, right. Yeah, right. I run to this community group. Like and Whitney I was to be there with my baby cousin, but she's bigger than me. Mm -hmm. so we attended the same school. She went to St. Hillers. I went to St. Hillers. So she was really the one going to the questioning because everybody knew her now. Is your cousin really pregnant? Is your cousin this? Is your cousin that? Mm -hmm. And then me coming up the taxi, walking up to my uncle's house. Everybody was like, she got raped. They raped her. That must be the thing. Yeah. So them never want to believe, say, raped. you did just have a man and you get pregnant. That must something happen to you. No, it's not really a big man, you know. The man was just one yeah, year old. man. Enough. But, you know, you have a fellow. So nobody no want to believe that. Them want to believe that. So, so why? Why nobody couldn't believe, say, you did just have sex with somebody by choice and get pregnant? It never matched I you. Know. I was too small. Mama, I oh, took the pass oh. for a grade two student. Okay. Okay. And at the time, my natural hair was really just doing the most. Right. So, so you never had the look. In a sense. Mm -mm. You never but I had a voice, though. Right. Right. All right. So what happened like with, what happened with you like accessing healthcare? What's that like for somebody who right. look little and then pregnant? Thank God for my FBI. Thank God for my mama, my SWAT mm -hmm. team. Because my mama is big. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They don't play with my mama. Mama mm -hmm. wanted to play with her daughter. Mm -hmm. I'm alpha. Mm -hmm. I'm the first, so I'm mm -hmm. alpha. Right. So when we walk, she say, she don't got to stay nothing, but she say. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. What you mean? You want to come across? You want to say something? Right. And did she That's have to she be, saying. watch this or no? I, hey, Kitty Boo! She was like, "Shafia, about up, people." She she the one looking over them. She looking over them, and she be like, "So her eyes alone talk. Her eyes alone talk." So she then, had to be mad enough people on your behalf. Because if I bad them up, I was wrong already. Right. So they want to say right. Mean stuff to me. Right. 
So you would have been the outer of the picnic, so your mother had to step in and And they would call me force ripe. Like what is force ripe? Right. I'm not force ripe. Right. Oh okay. So you're dealing with this. That's a whole phone call. So you're dealing with the stigma. (laughs) People are trying to shame you. It's easier because you have your mother's side. Yeah, your mother is not allowing anybody to shame you. Yes. What for you was... What? One girl. Yeah, when I was at the when we reach mm-hmm. and the big woman, be, mm-hmm. maybe because I have good manners and I know how to talk to people, I'm not the ghetto type, right? Right. So what really happened is them used to be like, Hey, y'all big woman. Or y'all look pretty. Because y'all look pretty, you know. We have your mother they behind you, you know. But just see, if y'all look pretty for two two like little pitney, oh god, I missed it. But you see the actual nurse. Yeah. Turn the beard, turn the beard. Be with your raw. One time I asked this nurse if she wanted her job because she didn't know me. I have links, you know. I would cry and tell him that she did me something. <laughs> so you feel like the nurse was rougher with you because you were young? Yes. Mm. Or because she didn't have any breakfast that day or mm. she had a problem. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Mm-hmm. But it should have come up on you. Me. Yeah. So, so you have the experience of your own. You went through the program at the Women's Center. Were you a part of that, the reintegration into, back into a traditional high school? At the time, we had g Yeah. So, yeah. you know, I did what I had to do. Right. And I passed for the York Castle High School. Right. Mm-hmm. And then One you of went the over best there. co-head schools in St. Anne. Right. And then you went on over there. Yeah, but guess what happened? Guess what happened? Why? It was just right close to my old school. And everybody was looking out for me. Oh, no. So the people them from your old school carried news by your new school? They did. They did. Okay. You so what? The people on the bus? Yeah. They, they look out for me. They le- I think, you see, if the weight of the bus wasn't good enough, right. the bus would turn over when those buses used to see me. Because everybody I look. I was famous a long time ago. (laughs) So, for you, how do you see this issue of teen pregnancy impacting girls and young women in Jamaica? Like, how is it impacting them? It's impacting them mentally. Yeah. And it's impacting their parents financially. Yeah. But what the system does is when you go back into school, you get bullied. Yeah. But it's not because of all your look. Because you know me take a long time and nobody can bully me because girls mm-hmm. like that and smell good and girls mm-hmm. right? So, but from you have a baby, you're a big failure. Yeah. The system tell you that you're a failure and yeah. you're going to pay for it. Yeah. And I, I don't understand these girls, you know, because if I was to talk about their business, they would hate me. Mm-hmm. Because you're having sex. I had sex, but I get catched by a belly. Mm-hmm. What is that must come to the light, sis? Come right. on now. Right. You're better. So there's I'm a better. big double standard. It's not a situation where, oh, you know, you have a set of girls who aren't having sex, throwing shade at a set of girls who are. Everybody is having sex, but somehow is the part where the pregnancy happened. We are now you for shame by yourself. And they ask us a lot of questions, and they ask us a question every day, and every day we do the same thing. We come like Area FM. Like what, what kind of the question morning, them ask you? The <laughs> so what what kind of question them ask you? Like when you're a teen mom and everybody knows, so them know say so you have the picnic. What are the types of questions that people just come to you with every day? So when I did that have sex, you did at Oh my god. What you do? You lay down by your back. Why do you need that information? Who is that going to be? Because benefit? they want to say that when their elders used to tell them that if you lay down on your back you have a boy, if you lay down, if you stand up or if you do whatever you have a you girl. Have a girl. So me now, you come into my business, don't do it. Yeah, you're a little bit I don't like that. I don't like that. Okay. So it's affecting you mentally, it's affecting your family financially and, and emotionally. my family mm. we known 
yeah you know? right so it was really affecting my dad and what his friends would say yeah but his friends were there mm. You know, and my mommy was known too. Yeah, but her friends were really there physically. They were yeah. really there. yeah. Like they made sure you okay. You want anything to eat? I yeah. always get the food offering. That was a good thing though. Like, being pregnant, you get a lot of food for free. That's true. People do feed you. People do feed you, feed you all the time. <laughs> what are some of the things that you would say to young women about like? planning your life, setting goals, like what would you say to them about that part of, the, of life? All right. So the question that I've been getting since recently a lot is, how do you see yourself in five years? Mm -hmm. Plan it. Mm -hmm. So we're going to set some short-term goals. Mm -hmm. We're going to set some long-term goals. Mm -hmm. And we're going to think about how we're going to step and reach to the top. Right? Yeah. We're going to plan it, not in a dependent way. We're yeah. going to say to ourselves that, listen, we are without John, Peter, or Paul, I'm going to reach this goal. Mm -hmm. Don't do it in a way where, you know, if you never talk to the boy, and you know, give me a money, I'm going yeah. to reach. Because when you do that, you come off as needy, and you come off as, where you're going to be, you know, right. as, you know, right. you know, as you know, tell you. Yeah. Understand? I need them to be more dependent on themselves. Mm -hmm. And if you have a problem, don't take it out on the media. Do not come and post that. Listen, today I wanted Kentucky, but I got ramen instead. And I don't feel good about it. Because that way, you're coming after me as, listen, you want to underline your packet, or you want me to donate to you. Don't do that. Right. So, have goals for yourself. Know where you want them. Be clear, so you're going to get there upon your own. And be careful how you engage social media because that's going to shape how people perceive you. And that's going to play out in your life. Okay, so. Wait, I also want them to be themselves. Mm -hmm. Listen to me, you know. My followers know me. I will come on this without my wig, with my wig, in a big <laughs> shirt, in a nice dress, whatever. Yep. Whatever way I feel like coming to talk to them. I come talk to them. Yeah. Do not come on the media and borrow people things and come on here like a cute. Yeah. Because in reality, you don't have it. That is why you're setting the short-term goal and the long-term goal. Yeah. Working towards it. True. Don't be dependent. True. All the time. You understand me? Yeah. It don't look good. Because pleasing people on the media just to get the numbers, because a lot of them have an interest in, girl, you have this and that amount of followers and you reply, Girl, you have flesh and blood. It's all shit. I'm poor. So why not? Yeah. What? Yeah. And there's two things you said that really resonate with me. The first thing you say is you're like, yeah, look at depression. Did I lick me? And somebody did I look for like a love? And one of the things that people don't understand is depression can actually lead you to become more sexually active. People overlook that. When they hear about depression, they think you're just like, I'm sad. And you sit down all day sad. No, depression no. will have you out here looking for penis. It really will have you out here looking for penis because you're looking for some place to feel good. Yeah, because right? if people want to and pencil, I'm get shot. And... and we're just yeah, looking pencil. for somewhere to put our emotions. And so I think it's important that all of us be mindful of the fact that Baby, when you're making these decisions, it's you and your depression that's making True. these decisions. So please ask your depression, what is your contribution to this conversation? Because I think you're making it hard for me right this moment, you know? Right. And then the other thing you said is, like, be yourself. Because... Be yourself all the time. So talk about it. A lot of times, when we go in pursuit of sex, a whole heap of things where I look fine at the sex that is not just the sex, you know. We are looking for disappointing in a girl. We are looking for the little, we are looking for little validation. We are looking for little hug up. We are looking for somebody to talk to it. So if you got after the sex, then we talk to it, then we're nice to it. We are looking for somebody where we can end up on the phone with at night time because in you know, the house lonely and we feel sad and we feel bad about ourselves and Talk we really want to get her from the house in now. Night time, I think it was um, did it sell three nights. Yeah. And so you just pop up on the phone and you're like, yeah, man, this call is just going to go everywhere, right? And so people, 
we use sex as a way to try to get other things. We come along with the sex. I really the other as things we don't want, you know. Other things. Mm -hmm. Yes. Generation is using sex to get wig, to get iPhone, to get good up, good up food, and go to restaurants and cannot post papa but more than in foot and in parts. Yeah, do not play chicken parts and to have transactional sex. Right, get a little job, pack the bag if you have to pack the bag, sis. Learn to do the cash register business if you have to do it. Do not come on air acting like you right. are somebody, don't do that. Yes, and be okay with being yourself, like you don't have to come on here and impress everybody by having the best of this and the best of that like we, just we don't come know you boo. we don't know you praise person. the lord praise the lord praise the lord so how do you see social media impacting how young people make decisions about sex and about their relationships like how is social media impacting how we're making those choices all right so social media impacts them by the course that they read yeah. You see those quotes? Those quotes are their drugs. Right. So if they read a quote today and it says, if you have sex with him, sis, you're going to make it tomorrow. Right. Have sex with him. right. I think that they're living by social media too much. Yeah. Yes, yeah. somebody said amen. They're saying amen already. Okay, yes. that's <laughs> it. I think that social media is really playing a big part. Yeah. And then what I realize is, if I come now today and I say, you don't know it's your original Tikiana D, your heavyweight champion. Mm. But if I come and I say, listen, today I want you to accept that you're beautiful just the way that you are. They don't think any mind. Mm -hmm. They don't like me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're straying from the positivity mm. and going into too much of the, the Dear and Ken codes yeah. or this couple this couple doing this, this couple doing that, and I want to be like them. But they don't know the journey. Mm -hmm. They're living by social media too much. They mm -hmm. don't know the journey. People are not posting the difficulties that they have on the media. People yeah. posting the bright side. And there's really no bright side. They're only polishing the doll. Yeah, true. They don't yeah. know that. There's no bright side. They're only polishing the doll. Yes! How do you... So I'm glad you bring up like Dear and Ken and all of them type of thing there. How is social media impacting... How we think about lifestyle and what is the type of lifestyle we not only should want, we should have already. All right, the lifestyle. Mm. The lifestyle that they want is when the camera comes close, they see a lot of holes in the front of my head. They want the wig lifestyle, right? They want Wiggy the Anna. lifestyle. Mm -hmm. I normally say they want the boo delicious life, girl. They want yeah. to come out boo deliciously done, yeah. right? Yeah. But if it's to come out boo deliciously done, it's good to have a solid job. Yeah. It's good to have. I hear people saying that education is still the key. Yeah. Yes, education is the key. But right now, the pandemic has taught us that talent is also something. Mm -hmm. Talent can do you something too. Because if I don't talk, I don't get paid. Mm -hmm. Fact. I don't dance certain things. And I don't take up every job either. Yeah. So anybody who come out here with some sexual, sexual song is not me, somebody else, mm -hmm. right? So you have to know what you're doing. Your image is a powerful thing. But you have to wait. It's a stepping process. You have to do some things, right? Not some illegal things, you know. You have to do something. Patience is key. Yeah. Take your time. Pray about it. Have faith. But what they're doing is they're praying and not believing. Mm -hmm. They're praying and demanding. Yes. You feel like they're too entitled. Yes. God don't give you oxygen and clothes to wear for your back. And you have to tell the man, you really want one two-story house with glass door? No. You can't pay a bill two-story house with glass door? I want it today. I don't tomorrow. have a job, but I just need it's a house like now. tomorrow want it. Early, early. Yeah. Me can buy fabulous and I don't know how to clean glass, but I want the house now. Complicated. So how I don't do know how to use elevator, but I want a hotel. And when we come from the hotel, we don't have no money to eat no food later. <laughs> but they're going to post the picture of them from the hotel. Yeah. And go on like them. Still there at the hotel to make them get a thing. So I have a long money yeah. to stay at the hotel. How do you hold on to yourself in the presence of all of this social media? How do you hold on to you? Like how you even know who you be? I should talk. 
You talk, tell me. Okay. First of all, I am Deandra Aisha Wallace. Yes, I call my government name because I know who I am. Right. Stamped on press on my birth certificate that we went for of RGB. Right? Mm -hmm. I am also Wallace. I am wanted to the social media, the people then. Yeah. But Deandra is different because Deandra has Deandre. Yeah. And Deandra cannot shout out at Deandre all the time unless you don't want to listen to me. And then you know when we come out and yeah. who really who own who because yeah. he's growing past me. He's getting taller than me. But you understand? Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. And I am also a daughter. Yeah. I am also a big sister. Even though me and my brother cannot breathe. I'm also a big sister. Mm -hmm. I'm also a loving person. Mm -hmm. But I also have to realize that, listen, these commenters don't know me. Yeah. The followers don't know me. Mm -hmm. They research about me. Yes, they know my birthday. They know my favorite color. Yeah. They know that I eat. They know that a girl don't like me cook. They know that I'm thick in confidence and nothing but. Mm -hmm. They love my personality, mm -hmm. but they don't know me. Yeah. They don't know if my bed is spread. They don't know if we're out of light. Mm -hmm. They don't know anything. Mm -hmm. So I cannot come on here every day focusing on, I have to do this to make them laugh. I have to do this to make them happy. I have to do this to inspire people. Yeah. I have to work with a lot of different personalities. Yeah. And I'm only one person. Mm -hmm. I have Tiki and Agya. Mm -hmm. For the girls who feel as if they're not nice enough or they don't love themselves. Mm -hmm. I have the collarbone gang. Yeah. For the maga people who do appreciate themselves, but me have to make them appreciate themselves. Mm -hmm. I have the elder gang. Yeah. I have elders, I have older people dealing with how their situation dealing with. And sometimes their situations drain my energy. Mm -hmm. Because I have to deal with rape victims. Mm -hmm. I have to deal with people in poverty. Mm -hmm. I have to deal with people who are thinking about drawing for the rope. Yeah. I have to deal with so much. I started this as a YouTuber. Yeah. I did not know what I wanted to do with my platform. Yeah. But I started at 300 subscribers before posting my first video. Yeah. And I did what I have to do. Then... I grew into becoming a whole team mom ambassador. Mm -hmm. Nobody has signed me to a contract as yet, mm -hmm. but I am a team mom ambassador. Mm -hmm. I'm also a representing for the young men who are going through struggles too. Because I have young fathers who reach out to me, mm -hmm. talk to me, and tell me that, listen, it's not that I'm shying away, but I don't know how to deal with the baby. Mm -hmm. The baby is constantly crying, and the baby is not stopping, not at all. The baby just want to make nice, I don't know what to do. I don't mm -hmm. know what to do. And they have to say, listen, walk, sing a song, try something, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I have to deal with the elders that don't know how to speak to their children. And I have to say, listen to me no more, let me give you a catchphrase. Sometimes you have to give them the funny talk. Mm -hmm. You can't just come and say, darling, how are you? Because I'm going to feel pressure. I'm going to say, hmm, what did mommy hear to do? Why mm -hmm. is she coming? Like, mm -hmm. Something is wrong. You have to know what you're doing in this time. I see them say, they love me. They love my personality. But it is not easy. Yeah. I come on this platform. I get the hard comments, the good comments. But yeah. I get more good than the bad. Yeah. I don't read all the comments from the bad people because the be told they're below me. They're mm. behind the fake pages. Yes. And that's how you want to tell them that you're below me. Yes. Yeah. Your consciousness is not there and you want to bring down mine and I'm not here for it today. Yeah. Understand? Yeah. People need to know how to love themselves first before going on the media and creating a whole fan base. They say to me, Wally, can you get me to 10K followers? Can you get me to 1,000? I did not just get here overnight. Yeah. I worked for this. Yeah. Perfect. So, Mr. Tikiana Gang, I check in. Mr. Colorbone Gang, I check in. Mr. Elder Gang, everybody, I check in. And so what I'm getting from you is you have a you outside of social media. Your understanding of yourself is not built on social media. You exist no. before it. And when the camera turns off, you have a whole life. I'm still Wally with behind the camera, right. in front of the camera, right. beside it, yeah. when it's off. But my Perfect. family and my friends can tell you. Yeah. I think I'm better in person because right. you get me off guard. You get some expressions. People think I fake these expressions. I'm naturally like this. People are always confused. They always feel like it's a personality. No, some are just mad. Um, yeah, some are just legally have a place of a Bellevue and we go call it for free. Yeah, yeah. So, all right. More address that thing because I know that there are people who will misunderstand this. What about people who look at it and say, 
Oh, she calls herself a teen mom ambassador. She's telling people they should go out and be teen moms. What do you say to people like that? What is your actual message to young people about becoming a mom while you're a teenager? Listen to me, you know, I never tell nobody to have sex. Mm -hmm. Close your leg, girl. Mm -hmm. Close your leg. But what should I say now? Is it being a teen mom for those who made the mistake already and you're on the path of going and you're fixing up yourself and you're fixing up life in your second time? What's me now? We're going to do it and we're not going to make society tell us that we're failures. Because when you book your tour, you can go back and you have to put something on it and it heals. We're going to heal. You understand me? Yeah. We're going to heal. But as if you know who seems to be called Wally do it and get away with it and come back. I had my baby in 2016. Mm -hmm. This is 2021. Mm -hmm. Do the maths. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. It is not just getting up tomorrow and saying that. Oh, for that confidence, I'm going to tell them some of I'm going to get away with it. No. He never tell you that it is a learning process. It is a growing, you're healing, and I'm still not, I'm still not fully healed because mm -hmm. to be told, I have a lot of emotions to deal with. Me want to tell some people where to go back, mm -hmm. like what they be telling me. I want to tell them how far they must go, like what they be telling me, mm -hmm. and all of that. But I will be the bigger person in the situation. I know that. Listen, girl, you're growing. Mm -hmm. You're learning each step. Tomorrow I might wake up and I might be in a different mood, and I will say, listen, whoa, you did that. Mm -hmm. Sometimes. I don't even know what I'm doing. To be honest, yeah. I'm just going by it. Yeah. And I realize that every time I do something, it makes a hit. Right. If I do I go viral. Right. If I talk about this, I go viral. Right. If I come on here and be mad today, I go right. viral. Right. But it is not me. It is God. Right. Because God knows what he's doing with me. Right. And God is saying that, girl. Same like when you tell me, say, listen, you see that primary education thing that is not for you. We mm -hmm. have to have a plan for you. Mm -hmm. He said, a year ago, he said, listen, stop. We're going to do something else. We're going to figure it out. And he said, talk about your story. Mm -hmm. And I talked about my story. And I'm here talking to you guys again about my story. I think people know my story by heart now. Right. But some people still don't hear me as it. And my voice is poor. Right. I can tell you that. Right. I want... Also, going to clear that. Listen, for example, the 14 year old with her two month old baby that is missing. If she heard me, she wouldn't be missing. I'm telling you. Mm -hmm. Because I'd make sure I have her on my back. Mm -hmm. she, she looked heavier than me, too, but I'd have her on my back mm -hmm. because I wouldn't let her go. You understand me? Yeah. I'd make sure that, listen, there is hope and the therapist, and I'm here to listen. Mm -hmm. I was talking to her sister, and her sister told me that she was bullied at home. Mm -hmm. Her father was doing the most. My father did the most. Yeah. I can't tell anybody that. And I have to look at it now and say, listen, he did not want that from me. Yes, yeah. we have he did not want it from me. But now we're at a point where we can have a conversation about it. Yeah. Yes, we have tension because, you know, he said some things and one can of still get some mm -hmm. stuff, but you know, mm -hmm. he's still upset at the fact that, listen, you're doing good now. You're doing good now. Yeah. And people are learning from you now. And people hear about the experience. Yeah. But then it's still wrong. Yeah. People still lack your foot because better things are the outcome. Right. You understand? Right. My setback was there. But my comeback, mm -hmm. oh Jesus. Mm -hmm. I'm a year behind in life, you know. Mm -hmm. But I'm also a step. Right. I have a son. Right. I have a son. Right. Send that here. Right. Save a bag of money. Save right. a bag of money. But still, I put my parents behind yeah. financially. Maybe they had plans, suppose they want to go on a nice vacation. The pampas money, the feed money, them have to help me go back to the woman center, spend the extra money on the doctor business and all of that. Yeah. It was really, you know? Yeah. It was really a setback to everybody. Some of my family members don't know how to deal with the embarrassment, the discrimination, yeah. and I have to really be taking it from everybody. Sometimes they say something and they say, um, like, they didn't know what is coming. Yeah. It's what I'm going to do now. What am I going to do in the situation now? Yeah. Five years ago, I never know that I was pregnant. Girl, the supper time, you're going to get sick. Mm -hmm. Grown up like four mm -hmm. years mm -hmm. mm -hmm. But this is not me. Yeah. The doctor saw me and she said, but this one is step out for a second. How are we going to tell mommy? Tell mommy what. Lady. What is there for tell her? Tell mommy what. You're pregnant. What are you going to do? Me? Put the thing on my belly my ear, boom boom, 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 four months. Four months where? 
How? Oh, how? What do you mean? People telling me that this is the most raw and uncut story they've ever seen in a while. Because me come and me tell my business because I want them to know that, listen. Yeah. Don't do it. Leave it alone. Leave it alone. So, for the people who may struggle to listen, the fact that you're a teen mom doesn't mean that you're saying to normalize being a teen mom. It means that you're We're saying... never normalizing it. You're saying, it happened. I mm -hmm. dealt with it. I'm at yes. a different place now, but please understand it was five years ago. It takes time. I'm still in the process of healing from what happened. My relationships are still in the process of healing from what happened. Sis, because... Yeah. But some of them, you know, they are younger than my attas. Yeah. I was at Atta's, but I wasn't a skimpy Atta's. Right. This right now, the Atta's belly, yeah. my shop. Right. The tiger stripes out here, right. doing the most. Right. 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 All of that. <sighs> my belly was out there. Yeah. And I was just right here. Yeah. And what I say to people is, reducing teenage pregnancy, that means that we're going to be more caught up in long-term contraceptives. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Who wants to start? Pretty yourself. I can come on here every day and say, do not have sex. Abstinence still makes sense. Right. Do not have sex. It's not good for you. You're going to spend about a million. They still have to have sex because they want to know what it is like. Mm -hmm. The codes and the society and the social media that they're seeing right now is saying to them that, listen, mm -hmm. sex is a most girl. Mm -hmm. And when I go love you, you're going to get married. Mm -hmm. Wife in a man's life. Side chick versus wifey and all of that. You understand me? Yeah. And it is wrong. But if I come on here and I say, listen, I want you guys to try a long-term contraceptive. I want you guys to be more safe in what you're doing. Condom yeah. is one, you know, but condom bursts because things yeah. do happen and the same thing happens to good day. They do, they do burst. So they I want them to burst. protect themselves. I want them to do more. But any advice to teen fathers? Same thing like what I'm telling the ladies. Protect yourself. Mm. Be on your guard. Know where you come about. And if you don't say I have a bag of female partners, is yourself proper and don't make the people in vagina get sick. Please take care of people's vaginas. Please be kind to people's yes. vaginas if you are if you are utilizing them. It's the decent thing yeah. to do. Okay, so go back in you know, and make sure some red don't like something we want to talk to you about, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. So we're not saying to normalize it. No. You talk a lot about the importance of having a youth. And I think it's like one of the most profound things where you can say become a feel say, what if for young people, including when me did young, but they just couldn't wait to stop young. I just did not want to be stuck in this youth it's anymore. So I just spend a bag of money now. So tell, can you just tell, drop a couple of gems about the importance <laughs> of having a youth. Okay, so to the people on the live stream, I'd like to say to you, darling, please don't rush it. Don't rush it, girl. Sir, don't rush it. I could see it quicker fast. Don't rush it. Mm -hmm. I was like, I want to grow up because you know why my mother and father are talking to me so rough. Mm -hmm. Why they think they can really. Mm -hmm. You understand me? Yes. Why? Why you think say you can always tell me say go and go wash your place? No. Yeah. And for wash your place, no. You're gonna tell me say sweep. No. I want to go with my friends. You're gonna tell me say um I don't think you should go to their friends. Sometimes when a parents tell her no is for a good thing. Sometimes when them say no, just all out because they have them reason why they must tell you no. And sometimes your parents tell her watch your friends or your parents tell her say listen, watch who you talk to, watch who you have around you. Watch them. Watch them. With your two eye. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Watch them with the two eye. You feel yeah. instinct, your gut instinct. Tell us, listen, girl, that friend here is not for you. Hold yeah. out a little bit. Watch the friend and watch it. Your parents sit things before you see it. Your parents sit things before you see it. Yeah. And I'm not telling you, like, if God said, girl, come back again from the earth, I'm not come back because out here is nice. Mm. Out here are wild and crazy. But we glad you said that. Off. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. We try to rush growing up, right? And we always say, we want to get big. When mm -hmm. we get big, we have bills. We have things to do. 
And when you have a child, you know, have nothing for yourself because your child is first. When the friend of them come, the friend of them say, what you want for the baby? They ask you what you want. Barry will not give up more than soap and look at cold gear. What do you mean? What do you mean? Watch them. And a lot of them friend you and check up on you. But they want to fasten your business for the group chat. Careful of the people you have around you. Mm-hmm. Careful of how fast you want to grow up. Yeah. Because you're going to be your own. You're going to be on your own. You have different bills. You have apartment bill. You might get a car. You want gas. You want food gas too. Not only car gas. You want all of these things. Talk about the and price you, of pampers. Talk about the price of pampers. It's not even the price of the pampers. You know, it's how often you have to buy the pampers. And one minute the baby want this feeding, and the next minute the baby don't want that feeding. Okay. Oh, okay. baby wants something else. Baby feel for something nice. Baby feel for something nice today. And you know, pity you know, no say it's the same clothes. What you are wear is the same price of baby clothes. And you who want baby put on class and baby go out the class in two weeks and see two months, you know. Two weeks, the struggle is real. And when you're a hot girl, you have to maintain yourself as a real hot girl. Mm-hmm. At all times. All times. No days off. I'm a one matey. And a one family member not really like you. All or right. a one friend that really I talk about you a long right. time. But right. really see the girl flop. Mm-hmm. Right. So, we still like our reach right here. I'm going to just give you a question from the audience. <laughs> Prepare yourself, Wally. Just gather yourself because I'm coming with a real one. What is your take on issuing condoms to teenagers in high school? Might as well. You mm-hmm. issue a condom to teenagers in high school mm-hmm. because they've been doing it, sis. Mm-hmm. They've been doing it. We have a lot of situations where teens, I wrote on the student course, right? So we find the teens doing whatever they're doing, the security locking up the school and all of that. And then find what they find, we put them find. Mm-hmm. And we find the condoms in the bathroom, don't find them on the floor. Mm-hmm. Better you speak to them about safe. So if I really think safe, so it should be a part of it. a school something. Mm-hmm. Maybe once a week or something, you have a safe sex store. Because yeah. it's better to use condom more than to be doing abortions. Yeah. Yeah. Give them the condom. Give them the support. They yeah, need. give them the condom. Yeah. Because really, it's when they go buy it, people bash them. Yeah. People True. bash them under the most. So they think they're doing something wrong when really they're protecting themselves. Yeah. Facts. Mm-hmm. Facts. So since we're talking about support, you are in a position where you are a social media creator, but you also, yes. like, you use social media, like you just browse social media. What are some of the tips that you can give to young people about how they engage social media and for just stay safe? while you uh, look for everybody else's life. What goes on the media stays on the media. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, when you delete it, I might have saved it already. Yeah. So, you see, when you're going out and you, you feel like that's out and do the most, sis, yeah. bear in mind that you might want a police work in the future. Yeah. You might want to represent this organization in the future. Yeah. And when they research on you and find certain things, you cannot represent them. Yeah. Because everybody, oh, I'm going to put on this skimpy clothes. I'm sorry, but no. Yeah. 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 Careful. What goes on the media state. So, all right. Because you, you have a lot of very important things to say about bouncing back. Now, let's say, when they post the nudity, it's screenshots. And now the screenshot is coming back to haunt me. Because the screenshot has migrated to the group chats and it's migrated from the group chat to somebody else's page. How do I deal with what I feel right now? Because plenty of people have got through that. I'm sis. <laughs> Pray about it. I, I, I can't help you with this. You I'm, can't. I'm not going to I can't. <laughs> Me feel that a lot of the things that you said before around knowing who you are and just sometimes you have to back, back and reconnect with yourself, All right. it can't apply yourself. So. Mm-hmm. But we you know, it will happen now. Mm-hmm. Because you don't do the doing. You, know? <laughs> you have. Mm-hmm. And it's coming back, right? It's coming back now. Yeah. 
yes you overcome it but you have to know that listen listen to me now yeah. put on your foot yeah. yes own up to what you do own up to what you do you made yeah. a mistake yeah if you do it again now we are going to lick you in your head you know, right. Sense. right but own up to what you do you made a mistake pray about it. learn from your mistake Le <laughs> learn if you don't mm. learn you know see that if you don't learn yeah. something is going to happen something yeah. right and I think that a lot of them do it. Nudity and the dance videos and whatever because they seek attention. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, so perfect segue in one of the questions that we come up in the chat because somebody says, I would love some advice on low self-esteem. What would you say to somebody who is living with low self-esteem right now? To be honest, what I used to do, mm -hmm. this is me and Mamiro. Mm -hmm. And Joe Wallace, yes. you are pretty. You are nice your figure is okay you are pretty girl don't make nobody tell you this then you tell me about cross device look for my vice now anyway oh, yes. <laughs> yes you don't sound that much of a man yeah. you sound nice and you can twist it up and you can do what you want to do a lot of people don't have a different accents now True. a lot of people can't you they don't have saying. the range, and that's the hard part. They don't part. have it, girl. They don't have the range. You know what I'm saying? That's it. My gap isn't that wide. Right. It's nice. I have superpowers. Right. Because a shot can go through my gap. Right. I can do certain things. People can't, you know, people can't do those things. They can't do those I things. Can't. Close to people don't know the power of having a gap. Sure don't. Sure don't. I talk about everything that they say is bad about me. Yeah. Turn it into my own positive way. Yeah. So when they talk... So, I mean, and it's I've a lot of super positive, you know, sometimes it's in my mental, but it's when I talk and they're talking negative, I just picture them as a big cartoon in front of them because they're funny bad. And I just there and I'm looking at them like, you don't have to look up in a car, everybody's taller than me. You're done. Are you finished? Now, when you finish, what is next? Something else, new episode. When the next chapter comes out of the book, you talk to me. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. Next question. No. I find the questions are um they're circling around a particular area. I'm glad to say we, we park right there. Do you have advice on the intake of posting or two by teenagers? Well and before you answer, before people who don't know, posting or two is what Bye, people mommy. call the morning after pill. I've heard other people call it the after morning pill. Yes. So what do you feel about teenagers taking the morning after pills? Listen now. What's a generation? generation? Yeah. And you in yourself know that, listen, I can save myself from what is about to happen. Yeah. Take the pill. Thank you. Take the pill. Mm-hmm. Because I've had a situation where this one particular person came to me and she was saying that, listen, I think I might be pregnant, but she had sex yesterday. Right. You can take the pill and save that what is about to happen. Yeah. And all, that, all the chaos that is about to, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Do something for yourself. Mm-hmm. Do something for yourself. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's see if we have no more. No more, no more. I feel like all of the something them where the people them... Did I ask about in a the in other part then? You talk about it already. So we're gonna go to now my last question for you. If you were to send a message to your fourteen year old self, that thick in spirit but not in body, fourteen year old self, what would you say to her? <laughs> Listen to me now, danger, boo. Danger. Little girl. You see you? You see to the friends that you currently have. Be careful. Mm. Because the peer pressure is one. And when they're saying they're not, they are. Mm -hmm. Because what they used to tell me, you know, you're not doing this. You're not doing that. Yeah. But they were doing it. Yeah. And... I was like the, the bad person, right? I was the bad person. I was like, oh my gosh, I messed up. But my friends were doing way more. 
Yeah. I had people doing the whole abortion thing. I was clueless to an abortion. Mm-hmm. At the time, I was depressed and all of that. Mm-hmm. Right? I want to tell her that your future is bright and keep up your head. And go and dance a little more. Mm-hmm. You're a dancer. Embrace the talent, man. Because what they used to tell me is that I dance like a robot. I didn't know that this was actually a special thing. Robot dance. People can't do it, man. Keep up doing a thing. Your vibe is unmatched, and nobody's as thick as you, boo. <laughs> Nobody. I love it. <laughs> okay. Let me get up myself. Did you know that interview? I go share with you. Get up myself for a wrap up. Oh, so we have come to the end of this conversation, y'all, and I'm very glad. Like to thanks everybody who's tuning in. Thanks to the people who are joining us from my page, Women Pen Center page, people who are joining me from Wally D's page. Um, we are concluding our conversation here. It's the National Family Planning Board Sex and You series, which is powered by UNICEF and UNAIDS. We couldn't do it without them. A big that ne- yeah, Wally, exactly showing the merch, just like that, right? Product placements and these things. Um <laughs> So we're reasoning about teen pregnancy. We have spoken to Mrs. Martin Berry of the Women's Center. And now we spoke to Wally D. Wally D is, well, Deandra Wally D. Wallace, who is a YouTuber, a dancer, who is also somebody who has gone through the program at the Women's Center and who is here to talk to us and let us know that if you are a teen mom, it's okay. You can get through it. If you are not a teen mom, it's okay for you to enjoy your youth. If you want to find more resources and if you want more support, you can go to the Women's Center. You can go to National Family Planning Board. You can reach out to your church or whatever other counseling service feel good for you. You can reach out to the National Parenting Commission. Young people, you can go to the Teen Hub. You can go to the regional health spaces. You can go to the health centers. You can go to the Adolescent Resource Center. You can go to the National Family Planning Board. You can go to Mrs. Google right whatever it is that you need to do do it and the thing that i always say to people is this we understand that we need guidance in every other area in our life if we want to learn english we have an english teacher if we learn maths we want we have a maths teacher if we want to learn football we have a coach but somehow in the area of sex we think that we're supposed to do it alone you cannot do it alone you are going to need guidance it's okay for you to reach out to it choose a contraceptive method that works for you practice abstinence if you get pregnant go into a program get yourself back in school get your life back on track and if you see people who are pregnant as teens there is no point in shaming them especially if you see them try to continue with them life them and do what they need to do my name is carla moore it has been my pleasure hosting It's a whole phone call. I hope to see you again on another episode of National Family Planning Board Sex and You. Have a great week.